Dogman meets the Owl Man of Cornwall. Dear Scary Stories NYC, In the mid-1990s, I met a woman online, which was a sort of exciting and new thing to do in those days. Let's call her Priscilla for the sake of this story. Priscilla was British, and I found her exotic compared to the women I knew in Lansing at the time. Nothing against Lansing, Michigan. That's where I grew up. I was just turned 27 years old, though, and I was ready for something different. The next thing you knew, we were talking about true love, and I was saving up for a plane ticket to England. Don't worry, though. This is not a story about romance. This is a story about two very different kinds of cryptids, one of which was apparently either a werewolf or a dogman. Having grown up in the Midwestern United States, I had been told my share of stories about the Wisconsin werewolf and the Michigan dogman. I also had an aunt who lived in Louisiana, so I got treated to tales of the Lugaroo or Rougarou from down on the bayou. My aunt insisted that the Lugaroo was something different from the northern dogman, though. She said the Lugaroo was as intelligent as the most intelligent human being while the dogmen of the northern territories were savage animals living only to kill and eat. I don't think she was speaking from personal experience, however. I think she was just passing on rumors and reputations. At any rate, my intended point is that I grew up around legends of oversized canines, intelligent canines, and upright walking canines, but... I had always thought that these creatures' range was limited to the center of the USA, stretching up into Canada. I never would have expected to head over to Cornwall in England and run into any kinds of monsters at all. Maybe Black Shock, the large black ghost dog of British legend with the glowing red eyes. Old Shuck didn't stand up on his hind legs like a modern dogman, though. Speaking of Black Shuck... While I was in England visiting Priscilla, we went to a church built back even earlier than the Black Shuck era. Stories of Shuck go as far back as the 1500s, but this church was built in the 1200s. I walked around that church with Pris looking at the old tombstones, somewhat awed by the age of the place. After all, when the stories of Shuck allegedly took place, this church and yard would have already been 300 years old, even older than the age the United States is as I write this. Of course, Priscilla was far less impressed with very old things than we Americans tend to be. She's used to being around things so old that nobody even knows why they were built in the first place anymore. To me, it was like vacationing in a fantasy novel. So much of what I was seeing had an enchanted look that just doesn't exist back in the States. So the evening I want to tell you about is the one when Priscilla and I were walking along this Old Church Road, which is appropriately named Old Church Road. I suppose we were lost in each other's eyes and enjoying a comfortably warm summer evening as the sky began changing colors and darkening. Without paying attention, we found that we had wandered toward a part of the old road, which had become overgrown and covered over with vegetation on both sides. It didn't literally have a roof on this tunnel-like section of the street, but the vegetation rose high enough to meet in the middle overhead. Even on sunny days, the only light inside that natural passageway would come from whatever little patches of light could make its way through down to ground level from in between all that leaf cover overhead. On that particular evening, there was precious little light left in the sky to try to peek down under those trees below. I actually stopped at the edge of the dark area. Out where we were, there were horses in a field and a sense of peace and contentment all around. Inside that tunnel looked like the entrance to a haunted house attraction. 
Priscilla laughed at my nervousness and pulled me into the darkness, whispering in my ear, Let your eyes adjust, but be quiet. You don't want the monsters to hear you. I smiled at her joke. Neither of us had any idea what was about to happen until it was already happening. So the two of us were standing still on the road just inside the dark cover, peering into the darkness and waiting for our eyes to adjust. I was the first one to see it, and it took me a few seconds to be certain that I was actually seeing it before I nudged Pris and motioned in that direction. She turned her head and sort of jumped in place, and I knew she was seeing the same thing that I was seeing. It was a dog-headed man, or else it was an upright walking canine, one or the other. It was partially hidden by vegetation, but we were seeing it on its left side, and it was facing away from us toward our left. He had not noticed our presence, so interested was he in something that was on the opposite side of that old church road. Glancing in that direction, I couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. Pris was already in motion, moving to our right, trying to get an angle where we could see what the dogman was seeing. When we finally did succeed in this, I found the answer even more confusing than the question itself. Even as I was looking at whatever this was, I didn't know what I was looking at. To be honest, the first thing I thought of was ancient Australian cave art. There are drawings of creatures who are humanoid, yet have gigantic black alien-looking eyes. There's a sort of line in the middle of the face, and what might be a halo or a helmet surrounding the cranium. That's in the Australian cave art, I mean, which is supposed to be among the oldest in the world that we know of. I felt my body temperature drop as fear overtook my entire body. There was a being taller than myself in those woods over there. It appeared to be as bipedal as the dogman stalking it, but its face was large, white, and flat. I noticed these two little sort of devil horns on top of its head, and I swear that I wondered if I was dreaming. I didn't know what that beast was, and I couldn't tell what the heck it was doing, since it was largely hidden from our view. In a sudden explosion of sound and leaves and fury, the dogman burst out of the woods on our right, into the center of the old church road, barking furiously at the other creature in those woods. Once in full view, I have to say that the dogman was shockingly large. It was bear-sized, and I'm not even exaggerating in the slightest. It was somewhat crouched, in a position as though ready to pounce, and yet, he still had to have been taller than I am when standing as tall as I can. His fur was a dark gray, and although it was mostly thick and shaggy, there were places where it ran thin due to old injuries still not healed. Werewolves are supposed to have healing abilities which are out of the ordinary. That's why I argue that this must have been a European dogman. Priscilla said that this was a werewolf, just a very old one. In either case, the large gray animal man was clearly going to jump into those bushes if the strange alien-faced creature didn't come on out. The thing I saw next is the part nobody seems to believe. This next part is why I'm telling this story anonymously. I'm sick of receiving ridicule and being told that my story is unbelievable. None of this story is believable. It's all really hard for me to believe, and it happened to me. So, the big hiding creature started making a really odd sound that reminded me of some kind of bird, like a bird stressing out or something. An angry or frightened or at least very unhappy bird. It moved forward through the vegetation toward the dogman and the dogman took a step back and looked up at it. 
It still looked like those ancient Australian Aboriginal cave paintings, but it also looked like a bird, like one of those flat-faced owls. The body underneath that owl head was not the body of any kind of bird I've ever seen before. In fact, I'd describe the body as something more like a Sasquatch than anything which could fly. The bird-headed, cream-colored Bigfoot with the flat face and the giant alien eyes stood there, staring down angrily at the now cowering dogman. I wanted to run, but I saw the look on Priscilla's face. She was transfixed, as though hypnotized. If I ran away, I don't think she would have even noticed. So airtight was the vacuum of her attention, focused on those beasts in front of us. And then, slowly, something moved behind the owl-faced Squatch. Soon we could see that it was not one thing, but a number of things moving as one. It was more of the owl men, and each was larger than the last. And I could hear that canine beginning to whine somewhat pathetically. I can't say that I blamed him. One of those creatures was frightening, but a family of them. That was too much to take. Each monster had a heart-shaped off-white owl head with two giant black alien eyes. The top of each of their heads appeared pointed as though with devil horns, but I don't believe those were horns at all. I think those might have been its ears, or maybe just feathers if it truly was some kind of mutated or evolved bird. If the dogman was designed by nature to create fear, then these owl-headed demonic presences seem designed to frighten the dogman. I don't know if Priscilla took off running back the way we came first, or if the dogman burst out of those trees first, but in either case, both happened. The dogman crashed into the trees to the right, followed by I don't know how many owl-faced cavemen. I chased Priscilla, although I would assume with very different intentions than those owl men. So, I will say that Priscilla provided me with a bit of information that I think makes this story even more interesting. Apparently, back in the 1970s, there were a number of reports of an owl man, and the reports, in fact, came from Cornwall. That's where we were, Cornwall. Since the sightings ceased after a prankster named Doc Shields stopped promoting them, a lot of people assumed that Owl Man was a hoax and that Doc Shields was the one perpetrating said hoax. Well, my sighting was of more than one creature and it took place 20 years later. So maybe if this is real, it's a kind of bird that only reproduces once every 20 years or something like that. It might explain the large time gap between sightings. I went to a therapist for a few years after that sighting until I became convinced it wasn't helping me in the slightest. I still, to this day, find myself haunted by bad dreams even decades later. I close my eyes, I fall asleep, and then I'm right back in the middle of the horrifying night when... <laughs> Dogman meets the Owl Man of Cornwall. Today's EP is Navratil. He's a badass, so I feel, and you know that I ain't lying when I say thank you to Brian. Please join us in thanking Brian Navratil for becoming a Scary Stories channel member. And you know that you too can join and check out our over 24 hours of archived secret uncensored dogman stories far too wild to ever tell on this channel. And now here is international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman to fill in the rest of the deets. Hank? Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it with your friends and family that you think might also be interested. If you would like to see more of our work, please consider subscribing 
and hitting that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will alert you when we put out a new video. To become a channel member and gain access to our special perks, you can click that join link under each of our videos. Another option is to join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. You can join for as little as 99 cents on YouTube or a buck 50 at peterbernard.com and that gains you access to our weekly secret uncensored episodes. If you'd like to see our 21 hours of archives of uncensored dogman stories, then please join at the $3 level or above. To get to watch our shows in advance of the public, please join at our $10 level. That gets you all the perks. If you join our channel memberships, you need to check our community page here on YouTube in order to get the links to the secret videos and other perks. If you're in the PayPal Subscribers Club, Peter will email you all the news and links himself. Once joining the PayPal Club, which is Peter's homemade club, please give him a chance to see that you've joined and to compose you a personal welcome email, as none of that is automated. But whichever you join, we'll name you an executive producer for the next available episode. Do you have a scary experience that you'd like to share with us? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 lascary That's 804-537-2279. It's a Google voicemail box, so that means it keeps cutting off after every three minutes. If your story is longer than that, Please keep calling back and we can piece it together on our end. Good night and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.